Hi, everyone. Like Patricia said, my name is Katie Today, and that's not my name today. My last name is Today. <laughs> um, and I wanted to, though I think a lot of you probably know me as Katie Stewart, so you may be confused. Um, but I am a 2015 graduate from the program here. I have, what, seven classmates here? Um, and I wanted to kind of kick off my speech talking about a memory I have of something that happened while I was here. So I know Marcus brought up the executive seminar speaker series this morning, but if you weren't here, it's when we bring in people from the industry to come in and talk to the students about just all sorts of different things, from questionnaire development and how to write reports and anything like that. So the one in particular that I want to talk about is one where we were learning about career development, uh, resume building, and things like that. So something that he said that really stuck out to me was that most people from this program, and even the industry and workplace at large, tend to leave their first job within two to three years. And that really surprised me. My mom's been at the same school district for 20 years, and my grandma spent her entire working career at the NSA. So why the shift now? Well, the employee experience. Things are different now. Employees are recognizing that they can earn more, they can learn more, and they can do more if they actually leave their current role for something else. Besides just financial rewards, there is the there are two main kind of things that are changing right now. So millennials are entering the workforce. They're even leading as bosses now. And just like every generation before them, they're bringing with them new thoughts and feelings on what's the right way to do things. The next shift that we're seeing is changing technology. It's moving ever more quickly as it always does. We've got cars that drive themselves now, and most of you have better cameras in your pockets than professionals used to carry. So I wanna dig a little bit into some of the trends that you can take advantage of to be a change agent in your own organization. So we'll start with millennials. Millennials are actually the largest portion of the workforce right now at 35%. They were born into a world with a plethora of technologies and it's ingrained into their cultures now. The average millennial makes $40,581 and saves 8% of their income. 64% of them actually started a side hustle like Eric <laughs> talked about, whether that's for income purposes or to supplement their passions. Many people may not even recognize that millennials were actually born between the years of 1981 and 1996. They're 23 to 38 years old. Most have graduated from college by now if they chose to go, which many did. 49% of millennials would actually leave their job in the next two years if they could. 25% of them say that it's because of learning and development opportunities not being there. This falls behind only financial rewards and advancement opportunities, which I think we can all agree is something that plagues every generation. So as you can see, millennials definitely see a need for new skills and continual learning. Only one in five millennials says that they have the skills that they need to stay competitive throughout their career, while 70% think they only have partial skills. The businesses actually agree with millennials. They think that they need more skills and more learning as well. The question and the disagreement comes up then when you're talking about whose responsibility is it for this training. So millennials think that their businesses should be the ones training them, the companies that employ them. Gen Zers, those that are younger than millennials, think that educational <coughs> institutes should be doing it, things like college professors. If you ask a business though, they're gonna tell you that it's on the individual. They need to lead their own journey and find their own ways of doing it. I think something that's really important to think about here is the common saying that I'm sure most people have heard where one executive's talking to another and he says, what if we train our employees and they leave? And the other one says, what if you don't and they stay? It's really important for us to remember, <laughs> it's really important for us to remember that these people work for you. They're the ones that do what you need, and if you don't train them, then you don't have the greatest workforce that you can. So according to a 2019 work study, 96% of employees need some type of flexibility at work, but only about half of them think that they have the flexibility that they need. Even fewer have a range of flexibility types. The two main types of flexibility that people like 
or require is remote working and micro agility, which is the ability to take short one to three hour breaks in the middle of the day to take care of ad hoc needs as they, as they arise. People are trying to become better parents, better caregivers, and better for themselves. They need more time to lead healthy lives and make appointments for their mental and physical health and well-being. Flexibility is not only something that people are asking for, but it's actually something that really affects your retention. Employees and companies that lack flexibility are two times as more likely to be dissatisfied and leave for something more flexible. <laughs> Employees think that they can't be productive and effective in a structured work day, and they can't lead the lives that they really want to, whether that's having doctor's appointments, going to the gym, or just cooking healthy meals for themselves. Something that I think that's really important and was a little bit surprising to me is that companies that are <coughs> lacking in flexibility are actually perceived to be lacking in diversity and inclusion. Different types of people have different types of needs, and that doesn't stop when they come into the office. It's also important to note that while millennials are the ones that are asking for this flexibility, they're not the only ones that would benefit from it or would actually want it. Other generations would also like to have this flexibility and could benefit from it being, you know, they're still caregivers, they still need to take care of themselves. I think what's really important to think about here is if you are not a millennial and you're scared to ask for it, don't be. The more people that ask and the more generations that do, the more likely it's actually going to be to change. So now that we've talked <coughs> about millennials and their need for flexibility and things like that, we're gonna dive into technology, how it allows that flexibility that people are looking for, and how it also provides both the need for and the opportunity to have learning and development. So I know Large changes, implementing complete new technologies into your organization is not easy. And people of all levels of their organization recognize this. C-level executives and board members of large companies are citing digital readiness as their top concern right now. These organizations are forces to be reckoned with. And making organizational changes like this to compete with startups that were born in technology is like trying to turn a battleship. It's not easy. Employees really also have to buy into your new platform or whatever it is that you're trying to do, since again, they are the ones that make or break these sorts of things. They're the ones that actually have to make it work for you. According to a 2017 Smartsheet survey, 40% of workers spend 25% of their time or 60 days a year on repetitive and manual tasks, things like invoice processing. This is really a lot of time that could be better spent on complex thinking and the skills that you actually hired your employees for. 75% of workers say that they would um, like the automation and it would provide them the opportunity to spend more time on the interesting and rewarding parts of their career. I think this is super critical when you recognize the fact that nine in 10 employees would actually trade a portion of their lifetime earnings for greater meaning at work. Technology is not something to be scared of. It's something you can embrace in a way that'll make your workers' lives more uh, efficient and easier, and it can help increase your uh, culture. 71% of workers expect the same level of technology in their professional lives as they have in their personal lives. And just like in our personal lives, technology serves many different purposes. So must it in our professional lives. I've got some systems up here on the wall. They're cloud-based knowledge storage systems and project management systems. Some of you have probably recognized these or even used some of them in your daily work. They're not small and they're not new. Slack has 12 million daily users and Microsoft Teams has 13 million daily users. The point of both of these types of software systems is to ease the burden on companies and more importantly, their employees. Cloud-based knowledge storage systems are there to help you reduce the number of servers you have to have, people that need to be operating those. But also, they're really, really helpful when new regulations come out. Think about how when GDPR came out and many of us had to change all, the entire way we were working. Their entire focus is on getting up to speed with those new regulations so you can focus on the work that you actually need to do. Project management systems also help employees in all levels of organizations. They help people who are new get up to speed. They have access to past and present conversations and information 
about all of your projects. The current employees are actually able to access their things from anywhere, which allows them to have that flexibility of working remote that they're asking for. We do need to be careful, though, when implementing technologies like this. Most employees are pretty tech savvy, but this is still a new type of uh, information for them. And a quick Google search on tips for using Slack provides 32 million hits. Employees really need to know why they're doing what they're doing, what you want them to do. If they know why they're doing it and what the end goal is, they're much more likely to work with you and put in that effort to figure out those things. It's also important to make sure that you recognize the ability to access things from anywhere means that people now have the ability to access it at any time, which can kind of creep into their lives. You have to make sure that you're allowing your employees the balance that they're actually asking for in these systems. So what can you do to combat these changes in your organization? Provide education and training opportunities for your employees. It's not as hard as you think. You don't have to develop a proprietary system. There's things like LinkedIn Learning and Data Camp that are out there already and host all sorts of training things for you. There's also allow your, flex your employees flexibility. Let them take small breaks if they need. Let them work from anywhere. Or if they need some other type of flexibility, work with them to help them with that. And don't police them when they actually take advantage of it. Incorporate technology into your workspace. But like Amanda said, don't incorporate it just to incorporate it. You have to tell people why you're doing it and actually have a real meaning for it. You want to make sure that people are using it to be more effective and to actually replace those things that you're looking to automate. Finally, make sure that your company has a purpose and that you strive to embody it. Whether that is all the way up at the top, a big purpose for what you're doing, or all down to implementing a new calendar app and why you're having people do it to make sure the deadlines are hit more effectively. Now I know change like this isn't easy and it's not gonna happen overnight. All of us here are in different parts of our careers and on different pathways, so I'm sure a lot of you are probably thinking, I don't think I can do anything about that. But I think you're wrong. All of us can be agents of change in our own organization. We are here at a conference for that anyway, right? to learn new things, take it back to your company, and improve the lives of everyone around you. By taking some of these tips back into your workplace, you'll help your company improve and be more competitive in the war for talent. Thanks. <laughs>